Hi everyone, welcome back to another YouTube video. Today's video is going to be a bit more relaxed. I am going to do a Q&A on how I, why I started YouTube and how I balance YouTube and my 9 to 5 job, like how I balance you know, my YouTube, Instagram, blog, all of that with my, with work. And this was actually a question that was asked to me on Instagram, on like DMs. <laughs> you guys, a couple of you reached out to me asking these questions. So I thought that it would be good to just make a video about it. And I actually, sadly, um, I'm filming this on a Sunday. I have been sick for four days. And so I just also needed to do kind of like a more chilled laid back video. So I'm sitting here with some like warm water with lemon and honey and thought that we'd, uh, you know, sit down and have some girl talk and yeah, just, just talk about some stuff. By the way, if you guys ever do want to do a, like a more of a thorough Q and A video, definitely follow me on Instagram. It's the Fashion Squirrel. That's where I talk one to one to you guys a lot and through DMs, and I just love that. And if I ever were to do like a a more full Q and A, I would definitely post on there like, hey, I'm doing a Q and A and asking some questions and stuff. So definitely check that out. <laughs> All right, so let's get started. Why did I start YouTube? <laughs> this is kind of, I'm going to give a, like a two part answer here because I kind of started YouTube two times. One is if you say go to my channel page and you sort my videos by oldest videos, you will see that I, my first video was actually updated 10 or more I think years ago. And so that was uploaded in 2009. And honestly, when I uploaded that video, I thought that I was late to the game. That, oh, everyone's been doing YouTube for so many years now. And yeah, whatever, I'll just upload this video and, and, and so on. And it's kind of funny now because now it's like, oh, 2009 is considered like an earlier YouTuber. But actually, I kind of was like the generation that really like grew up with YouTube and I remember when YouTube first came onto the scene and I can remember very distinctly being over at one of my friend's houses and we were watching videos like uh, muffins and like shoes, oh my god, shoes and the dramatic chipmunk and all of the original youtube videos because obviously it used to be so different it was not as professional as it is now and it was just people kind of in their bedrooms talking kind of like this just on their bed and it felt very very real and i was someone who grew up in a very small town in northern new hampshire and and at the time i was still receiving a lot of like 17 magazine and cosmo girl and teen vogue in the mail and i would really really cherish those because there wasn't as much of like a fashion scene or makeup or you know where i grew up <laughs> and so i was very much looking for something like that and you know, had started on YouTube through just like, you know, the viral videos on YouTube, but then I discovered the YouTube beauty community. And this was also at the same time that I started wearing makeup because, you know, I was maybe like 12, 13 at the time, and I was just starting to get into makeup and I actually wasn't even allowed to wear it. But as soon as I was allowed to, I had no idea what I was doing, obviously. And so I turned to YouTube videos and that's where I really learned a lot and it was very exciting and it really, really felt like a community. And so I was watching YouTubers like Purse Buzz and Juicy Star 07 and this girl who did all of these like Conair videos and I remember she pronounced it like Conair and she was like, Conair should sponsor me. I like talk about them so much and then it was like... I mean, later on they probably did, but it was just like a joke at the time. And back in the day, people were uploading these videos because they really enjoyed it because it was just them speaking to the camera in their bedroom, 
when they were younger and just like discovering this kind of like outside world or at least that's you know how I saw it and a lot of other people I think teenagers at the time across America kind of saw it and we were just having fun and and everyone kind of loved it and um, this was before it turned into this whole like this was before you could make money on YouTube so people were really just kind of enjoying it and uploading things because they loved it because it was fun because they loved creating things and I had always always wanted to do this as well I like I have so many filmed videos from when I was younger that just never went up because I just really did not have any confidence I had zero confidence at all and I had always wanted to do it, but just never did because I thought that I wasn't good enough. I thought that nobody would watch it. I thought nobody would care if anybody who knew me found it, they would, they would think, oh, this girl is so silly. This is so stupid. And that they would bully me and make fun of me. And so, and so, yeah, I just like, I never did it. And then, and then, okay, now we're getting into the second part of this answer, which is that I kind of grew up from there, always, always watching YouTube videos, and then when I was in college, I was like a journalism major, and I did magazine publishing, you know, classes and all of these things, and I really wanted to just do something more creative that I could be in like the beauty and fashion beat, because that's just what I really loved, and at the time, fashion, the whole fashion industry, the whole journalism industry was completely changing because of this like digital evolution, like all of these, like, because magazines, newspapers traditionally relied on print, which was getting shut down all across the country right at the time that I was graduating, yay. And there's a lot of uncertainty. And so I had also had marketing as my minor and I decided, you know, out of all of those, like, out of my major and my minor, because I was actually a journalism major, I'm uh, sorry, I was a communications major, and I double specialized in journalism and public relations slash advertising, and then I minored in marketing. And I said, out of all of those things, the least one that I want to do is marketing, because the whole point is for profit, and it just wasn't, and it's a lot of Excel numbers. It's just something I didn't want to do. I wanted to write. I wanted to create things. I wanted to get creative and, you know, with colors and the way that, you know, angles and the way that things are situated. And it just makes me so passionate and happy. And so I found it very difficult to find a job in New York City in journalism right after I graduated. And so I ended up just pivoting and saying, okay, fine, I'll accept something in marketing. It was actually in sales, which is even worse. And, and then it just got more and more into me working in Excel and me creating formulas and me forecasting and numbers. And I just like, I realized like, I'm just not good at that as much as I want to be and I'm not passionate about it the people that I sit next to at work are like Excel saves lives and they love Excel and I'm like I hate Excel and so so I just and I and it's still even today I will apply for editorial assistant jobs and everything and I just can't get anything so I was kind of fed up and I just decided like look I need a creative outlet and even if, you know, even if no one ever finds me on YouTube, even if no one ever found my blog, ever found my Instagram, I would just be doing it because I love it. And it's something that makes me so happy and I have so much drive to do it. So yeah, so then either late in 2016 or early 2017, I started up my YouTube channel again. I made a really silly video just like as an intro. I really had no idea what I was doing, but looking back, I'm so glad that I did it because that is like the hardest first step is just sitting down and making something because I had this thing in my head that it has to be perfect. I have to figure out exactly the niche that I want to be in and I have to find out exactly, you know, how it's going to be, what I'm going to talk about. And really you figure that out along the way as you're creating things. My advice is to just 
create something like just sit down in front of your camera in front of your laptop webcam if you don't have a camera in front of your phone if that's all that you have just sit down make something and then you will learn from there YouTube and work. This is not easy. <laughs> it never is going to be easy. But the point, the thing is, is that you have to have a passion for it. The thing is, is if it's something that you really want to do, you really want it, and you truly, truly are doing it for the right reasons, then you will find a way to make it work. You will, like for me, I do YouTube on my, I have a nine to five job during the day. So it's like, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday I do YouTube during my nights and weekends so for example because it is winter right now and the daylight is when I'm at work like it's dark when I leave in the morning and it's dark when I get home from work at night I film on the weekends when it's sunny when I can get some natural sunlight so I you take a couple hours either Saturday or Sunday to film a video and then I edit the video either that Sunday night and then I post it on Monday or I will edit it if I'm ahead of schedule. I'll edit it like nights throughout the week. So that's that. In terms of Instagram, I will... So I actually hit made an entire video. I'll try to link it up top if I can I figure out how to do that. If not, I'll link it down below for sure but on how I take Instagram photos myself. And that's another thing is when you're first starting out, obviously you want really good quality photos, but you, you're not necessarily going to pay a photographer to take these photos of you, especially since photographers are so expensive. And it's, so for me, I figured out kind of a way to take photos by myself with a tripod on the streets. And everything is explained in that video. But basically I do that on Saturdays as well and I will then take those photos. So I, I do like batch shooting. Basically I'll shoot four or five outfits because my niece, niche is fashion on Saturday mornings. And then I'll edit them Sunday night and then I'll put them into my queue for Instagram and then I will post them throughout the week. And usually I will plan to post them during my lunch break at work. And that's another thing if you have a nine to five when you're trying to do all this is really utilize your lunch breaks. I use my lunch break to think of a caption, actually post the photo, and then I set about 30 minutes or so to like and respond to comments. So utilize your lunch break. And in the summer, things actually get a lot easier because you have more of a sunlight window. So if you need to shoot one random outfit or if you need, if you feel like filming on a Wednesday night as opposed to using your weekend, you can do that. Like when you get home from work, it's still light outside. You have the natural light from your window and you're good to go. That is if you want to use natural light, you can absolutely use artificial light as well. You can get some really great lighting. And then it just does come back to if this is what you really want because I have known some friends to start a YouTube channel and, you know, do it for like a year and then nothing happens, they're not growing a community and so they just give up and that's it. And my thought on that is, like, if you were truly doing it for the right reasons, you would stay with it no matter what because thinking back to old YouTube, when people were just making videos for fun because they loved it like those are the people that ended up becoming big youtubers because they're doing it for the right reasons so it's just like i don't know that's that's an important just something that's very important and then something else that i want to mention if you're really interested in this topic is this book called big magic by elizabeth gilbert she's the author of eat pray love and she made a book about creative living beyond fear so um and she has one chapter that I re that really spoke to me that uh, and this is such like a bad analogy but she talked about living whatever you do creatively let's just say it's YouTube here being as passionate about it as say and this is such a bad analogy so I'm so sorry for this but um, you know when somebody is cheating on someone else and they will go so far as to like you know 
they'll go very far to cover it up and to like sneak away and to you know like make sure that it's covered up and that they sneak away oh i need to blow my nose and to think about your creative passion in that same way so like for me that's like when i am at work at my nine to five i'm like ooh, i need to sneak away so that i can you know secretly write a blog post at starbucks like during my lunch hour or so that i can ooh, like oh i'm gonna wake up really early before anyone else wakes up so that i can get to golden hour and take that photo i've even brought my tripod into work sometimes to like during my lunch break again like just run outside and take like a, a picture for like a thumbnail for a video or an Instagram photo or something you know there's just so many like pockets of time and if you really are passionate about it you will find those pockets and you will find a way to make it work so so that's something else as well and I encourage you if this is something that you want to do to not be afraid of it to just go out make things and then you'll slowly realize that it's totally okay and that you can do this and that you're creating something amazing and it's an awesome feeling so those are some of the main points that I wanted to hit on on those two subjects if you have any other questions that you are curious about or want answered, leave them down below or again, follow my Instagram account, it's the Fashion Squirrel, and we can DM chat on there. Uh, but also, if you like this video, definitely make sure to leave it a like and subscribe, and hopefully I will see you guys next time. <laughs> Alright, bye!